and welcome into the ONTV Fantasy Football League podcast. I'm your host, Joey Tysick, and with me, my co-host, who is on vacation, Joe Johnson. Joe, how are we doing? I'm good, but uh, yeah, zooming in today. Can't miss the fantasy football show. <laughs> yeah, all work, no play. <laughs> um, it was kind of a crazy week of fantasy football, to be honest. Uh, a lot of close scores, uh, once again, coming down to Monday night football. And uh, just uh, some good news for you. You got a big win, and we'll, we'll get into that. I uh, am on the losing end once again. But uh, <laughs> how, how did your football slate go with Thanksgiving and then the Black Friday game and then into a regular Sunday of football. Oh, it was uh gosh, a long weekend of football. I I uh I had Thanksgiving dinner at my uh, cousin's house, so I want to make sure I'm there for kickoff. So I was there at 12:30. We had a big charcuterie board. Uh we watched football, uh, the Lions, uh Dallas, and then uh, I caught the late game when I got home. Uh, Friday, a uh, Black Friday game, and uh, yeah, so it was just a, a long weekend of football all the way through Monday night, and of course, it came down to the wire. Yeah, it was crazy. Um, so getting right into it, the first game that we have is Ian's team putting up 144 points on Tracy, and unfortunately, Tracy takes the loss. And we'll get to the standings later because those are crazy. But um, Ian's team putting up 144 points. Tracy putting up 117. Um, man, Ian's team just went to work. He got points from his kicker, his defense, his wide receivers. And the only one that underperformed was kind of his stars, Herbert and Eckler, which was a surprise. Yeah. Um, Flowers had a big game, 23 points. Uh, he didn't leave a whole lot on the bench. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Now, unfortunately for Tracy, uh, we both heard her complaining that every decision <laughs> she made was wrong. Yeah. Uh, Mostert had 21 on the bench. Uh, Rasheed Rice, 24 on the bench. Even Laporta had 17 on the bench. So yeah. uh, she's going to have to shake things up. Yeah, it, it's one of those hard things because in it, like my advice would be not to overthink it because Laporta had been kind of on a downslope the last couple of weeks, and then he finally got into the end zone on Thanksgiving. Um, so that was a tough call there. And then maybe the only one I would have played is possibly Raheem Mostert over Gus Edwards, but I know Gus Edwards has also been getting touchdowns uh, like wildfire, but I don't blame her for having Rasheed Rice on the bench. He hasn't really shown that he's that number one guy just yet, even though he's shown some flashes here and there. Yeah, and you know the Gus Edwards putting up four point seven just shows. And you and I have talked about this: the crowded backfield uh, with the Ravens. You just don't know who's going to get the ball, or whether uh, the quarterback Lamar is going to quarterback sneak it or run with it. So uh, you you pick one of them. You hope for the best. Sometimes you get burned. Yeah, and Gus Edwards is a guy that if if he doesn't get in the end zone, it's usually going to look kind of rough for him because that's that's where he gets a lot of his points. So. Unfortunate yeah. loss for Tracy, but now Ian is in a four-way tie technically for first uh, because of record. But uh, obviously the difference being points, uh, total points, but still it's it's wild. Uh, unfortunately, the next matchup that we have to talk about is you versus me. And uh, you put up 141, had one of your best weeks of the season. I had 122, which I got a lot closer than I thought I was going to. Um, I had some points from Tyler Bass uh, late in the Buffalo game that kind of got me somewhat close. But uh, Cooper Cup failed me. Dalton Schultz failed me. And the Kansas City defense was a bad call, unfortunately. But luckily, it didn't matter which defense I played in this game. So talk about your win. Yeah, I didn't think I was going to pull this off. You know, I, uh, every week we talk about my quarterback controversy. I went with Purdy this week. Of course, Mahomes doubled his score. Mm -hmm. I thought I was going to get burned by that. Um, yeah, so I really didn't think I was going to pull it off. My uh, tight end, Ferguson, <clears throat> who's been very reliable over the past month or so, only put up four and a half. But there was one guy who saved my bacon. Yeah. That was Kyron Williams, who came back off of injury, 
with the Rams and didn't know what to expect. Didn't know if I was going to get an eight-chan situation or what. And he looked remarkable. He looked amazing, uh, putting up 38.4 points. Uh, really, that was the difference in the game. If I would have had any other running back in that uh, slot, I would have lost. So uh, yeah. I'm hoping I'll see more of that going forward. I am on the bubble right now. I am in the eighth and bottom seed <laughs> for the playoffs. Yeah. So every win is crucial. And I'm hoping that I can get some production from him. I'm really liking my running backs, even though one is on a, a bye this week. But mm -hmm. uh, I'm really liking uh, Gibbs and Robinson. And uh, oh no, I don't have one on the bye. I was thinking of Addison, who uh, is on yeah. a bye this weekend. But uh, I got a really nice trio of running backs, and I hope they uh, get me into the playoffs and deep into the playoffs. Yeah, and my situation of injuries only gets worse as today it was announced that Jonathan Taylor is now questionable with a thumb injury. Oh, yeah. Uh, so there's a chance that he doesn't play this week. And uh, that depth that I was talking about two weeks ago has turned into dust, and I basically have no depth whatsoever. Uh, the thing that kind of hurt me was Tank Dell had 17, but if you watched the game, he could have had a huge game. There was a 50-some yard catch that they called back because of an illegal shift, um, and there was a couple other opportunities where he could have really had a crazy game, and it would have been a lot closer, but I don't know if I would have gotten the win. So, unfortunate, yeah, good one. but uh, you needed it a little bit more than I did as I'm already clinched into the playoffs. I'm just looking for yeah. seating at this point. I mean, when McCaffrey put up 30 on Thanksgiving, I was already thinking, okay, <laughs> yeah. I'm in trouble. Yeah. Um, another game that came down to Monday night, the, probably the closest matchup, I would say, of the weekend. Uh, Sammy's Green Buckeye beaten Malik's last place team to put Sammy into first place. And Ooh. I'm glad that I didn't have to see him today to talk about it. Um, <laughs> now, he took the lead late Monday, right? Yeah, he played Minnesota's defense. Uh, and they didn't look all that great on Monday night, but uh, they had a couple turnovers in the second half late in the game as well, and they just didn't give up that many points so that he got 11 points from the Minnesota defense, which gave him the four-point win. Um, and kind of an unsung hero for his team, I would say, and a lot of people for fantasy. Michael Pittman Jr. put up 20 points with 107 yeah. catch or yards for 10 catches. He's been really consistent this year. And then, of course, Jalen Hurts versus Josh Allen. I'm glad that these two... We're playing against each other in that game, which was really fun because Josh Allen and Jalen Hurts both had tremendous games as Josh Allen about put up 40 and Jalen Hurts at about 35. Yeah, that really felt like a playoff game, didn't it? I mean, yeah. it was uh, one of the better, uh, more exciting games of the season. And uh, that second half, they were just throwing punches back and forth and both uh, both fantasy teams uh, benefited from that by getting monster points from them. And Allen, I feel like he's a better fantasy quarterback than he is a real life quarterback because even though he puts up a ton of points in fantasy, those turnovers kill their team. Uh, he put up some costly turnovers there. So uh, it was a great game and a uh, big points producer for fantasy. Yeah, it, it's it was crazy for him to go back and forth. Uh, and yeah, I would say they're Buffalo is just a weird team. They're six and six. They're on the verge of missing the playoffs, which would be wild. Um, and then Sammy also got a huge day from Keenan Allen again, which he's just been incredible this season, turning back the clocks. A lot of people thought he was going to be too old this year and struggling, but he's had an incredible season. And that late drive in that game, it, it was just Allen, Allen, Allen. And if yeah. you're in a PPR league, that's 10 points right there and just receptions. I mean, yeah. he was the only one catching passes in those late drives. Yeah, it was crazy. It was. It seemed like Baltimore was just saying, we'll let him beat us and nobody else. And yeah. it, apparently it worked out, but not for fantasy. Uh, so now, like I said, Sammy moves into first place. Malik still kind of needing a win. I, he's almost locked in. I think if he, he just has to win this week, which he plays me this week. Um, and he'll be locked in if he can get that win. So that isn't he up near the top in points? But he's yeah. Short so so I guess yeah. So I guess you're right. So he probably is locked in then. Um, maybe there's some weird scenario that he couldn't. 
I don't know. Oh, I guess we'll have to check when we get to the standings, but that's what I mean. Yeah. It, it gets wild. Um, and then we have halftime honeybees taking down the Dak Knight Rises. So the two top teams last week, uh, plus Tracy's team, all lost this week, which makes the standings even crazier. Uh, so Becky got 133 points, and Marie got 111. And just like we've been talking all season, Tyreek Hill is what keeps Becky's team in motion. And Mike Evans, another guy that's turning back the clock every year. Every year that people say he's getting too old, he seems to produce. He put up 25 points with two touchdowns in that game. And then Tony Pollard finally kind of coming alive on Thanksgiving as the whole, I mean, the whole Dallas offense came alive, but they looked really good. Yeah, that uh, tendency for Marie to start the two uh, Seahawk wide receivers kind of didn't work this week. Yeah. Uh, each one put up six points for a total of 12 and uh, that hurts when neither one of them produces. So right. that was a bit uh, down. And uh, Henry, he had a big game this week. And uh, mm -hmm. But, yeah, uh, Amari Cooper, who's now listed as questionable, only three points. With, he, yeah. he had a stretch where he was on fire. And yeah. uh, I think since they lost their quarterback, uh, their offense is going to be struggling. Yeah, they, they might look to Joe Flacco in the coming weeks, to be honest, which is crazy. Um, and if, it stinks because Marie did leave some points on the bench. Gabe Davis had a huge game, 105 yeah. uh, yards with a touchdown. Tyler Higby not going to start over Travis Kelsey, but he put up a lot of points. Uh, so, yeah, it, you live or die by the Seattle wide receivers, I guess. Yeah. And uh, Becky keeps marching along. She's also right on that verge of uh, playoff contention. And then uh -oh. finally... What? Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, uh, Tua had another down performance, yeah. not scoring uh, double digits. So even though Hill had a big game, uh, Tua didn't. Um, yeah. And uh, it's like you said, uh, you know, sometimes uh, Becky can live and die by her uh, Miami players, and she's lucky to get the win this week looking at that Tua performance. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely tough, especially when you saw Dak Prescott put up 32 again on Thanksgiving. He's been on a, an absolute tear. Yeah. Um, and then finally, we'll briefly go over Jordan versus Drake. Uh, <laughs> Drake hey, once again, Drake had a chance, but uh, Josh Dobbs threw four interceptions on Monday Night Football, and that was just, that was awful to watch. It, the, the Monday Night game, if you didn't have any fantasy implications going, terrible game to watch. I would have turned it off a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I was cheering Dobbs on to, you know, come in and lead the Vikings to some wins. And then he just had his worst game yet. And it was mm -hmm. painful to watch, even though, I mean, some of those throws were tipped into the hands of, of the defenders that happened a couple of times. And yeah. so, I mean, yeah, maybe the pass could have been more accurate, but maybe those catches should have been made. So mm -hmm. uh, Dobbs had a terrible game. Um, of course, Drake's starting a guy on IR, and uh, <laughs> yeah, and then Detroit's defense, who I started in uh, DraftKings, uh, got zero. I'm yeah. you thought they could have, you know, put something up, but they had a really rough game on Thanksgiving. Yeah, it was unfun to watch, and I think that's partially why my brother forgot his lineup too. He left Ken Walker in. I don't think he was keeping track of injuries as much. He was at the Thanksgiving game for the Lions. And then I think because he was at that game, he forgot about the other Thanksgiving games and just wasn't paying attention. So it's kind of nice that he got the win, though, because anybody that he would have replaced basically would have gotten him the win. So, yeah, probably rightfully so. Yeah, there are some points on this bench. Uh, Stevenson with the Patriots, yeah. 20 points. Ridley had an up game. He looked fantastic. Yeah, he's like Jordan's team is actually pretty solid. I think he's just kind of run into some bad luck here and there. And then once he kind of fell out of it, he's lost a little bit of interest, but if he could sneak into the playoffs, he could always be dangerous, but who yeah. knows? Well, those are the two guys I need to stay ahead of <laughs> right. and I'm playing Drake next week. So, uh, I don't want, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to get air again. Cause you know what happens, but, uh, yeah. I'm hoping for a win next week. I don't know if that'll clinch the playoffs, but I sure would like to win out these next two weeks. Yeah. Now, the thing that stinks about this week, week 13 has six teams on by. Um, yeah. 
for the most part, they're not super valuable teams. Um, but teams like the Ravens uh, have some significant players, of course. Buffalo. Um, Buffalo, of course. And then uh, all the rest of the teams are okay. Like you got the Giants, you got like Saquon, but he's not played very well. Um, so if you need bi bi week replacements, um, ton of quarterbacks, of course, in this league. Um, a few wide receivers here and there. Um, running backs have been empty for a long time. So you're going to have to do your best if you need any help in that uh, realm. Yeah. I'm trying to think. Tight end. Kate Otten is a good choice if you need a, a replacement tight end. I don't know exactly who would be missing um, this week since everybody's been injured, but that's a possibility. Um, so do what you can with the, the waivers. <laughs> it's kind of run dry there at the top. He had a big game. Is he available? Uh, according to mine, he is. Oh, maybe I missed him. Then. Yeah. I would say Fryermuth is probably a top, top option. Everett oh yeah, there he is. Yeah. yeah Fryermuth would be, a, would be a big one. They just got a new offensive coordinator. So last week he looked really good. It It could be you know, a one and done kind of game. That's how tight ends work sometimes. But if you really need somebody, it, it, you might as well take a flyer on it. Yeah. Um, okay. Looking to week 13, it's going to be pretty crazy. Let's take a look at the standings actually real quick. So, cause this will be important. Sammy's at number one because he's leading in points now, which is just the worst possible uh, option for us. Um, Marie is in second. I'm in third and Ian is in fourth. We all have an eight and four record, which is crazy. Wow. Uh, Tracy sits at seven and five. Malik is at five and seven along with Becky and yourself. And you guys are all vying for that last position as Jordan is, is right there. He's four and eight. Um, but he does not hold a points tiebreaker against either of you guys. So as long as you guys get one more win, and score like an adequate amount of points, you should be fine. Uh, yeah. I think Malik is in the clear. I'm pretty sure Malik is locked. I know that Yahoo wouldn't lock him in because of the tiebreakers, but he's in. Well, be look at here. He's leading the entire league in points. So if it comes down to a points tiebreaker, right. he's leading the whole league, and yet he's in Although, sixth place. I guess, because there is two weeks left, if he lost both of these weeks and Jordan won both these weeks, okay, so never mind. He's not locked. Nobody's locked in yet. <laughs> That's how crazy. I haven't even been able to figure out the math for it. But uh, so those are the wild spots. Six, seven, eight, and nine are all right there. And Malik's playing me this week. Uh, Jordan's playing Tracy, which could be interesting because if Tracy loses to Jordan, she might fall down another peg. Uh, Sammy and Marie are playing for the top spot this week, which will be super exciting. Uh, Becky's playing Ian's team, both of them having big weeks. And then you're playing Drake's team who has a ton of buys. Yeah. He's, he would really have to hit the waiver wire hard to, to fill in those gaps. Yeah. And I've made sure at this point that I am not telling him to set his lineup. If he happens to do that, you're just, you're <laughs> just bad luck. You just have bad luck. That's all I can say. Yeah. Um, uh, because he has to pick up a bunch of people and change everybody out, but you should have a free win, so to speak. Look at the uh, look at the prediction right now. One hundred and eight to thirty eight is yeah. the prediction as his roster stands right now. Right, he has one, two, three, four, five players that are good to go, and they're all basically low end players. I'm not hurt too bad by buys. Uh, like I said, uh, Addison's on a buy for me, so. I was hoping to throw Myers in, but he's on a buy as well. Yeah. So I uh, did a little tweaking. I threw Marquise Brown in Hollywood Brown, who hasn't been playing really well, but he had a decent game this past weekend. So I hope uh, him and Murray are are finding some chemistry there. Yeah. Have you made a decision on the Brock Purdy, Patrick Mahomes situation? <laughs> That's right a weekly update. Now, uh, Purdy has the better matchup. He's, the he's playing Philadelphia and that could be a shootout. Uh, Mahomes is going to green Bay and I don't know what the weather is supposed to be like next Sunday. 
Yeah. Um, as of right now, Purdy has the better matchup, so that's who I have in my starting lineup right now. That is a good point. At this time of the year, you got to start watching out for weather a little bit as it gets colder. And I know there's a lot of rain expected this weekend. I don't know exactly which games just yet, but I know that there's a lot of weather in the forecast. So could yeah. be interesting. But luck would... luckily for you, you probably get one more week to kind of decipher your quarterback situation. Yeah, yeah, I got him in right now, but uh, there's we still got a few days. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I'm playing Malik right now. He's favored 113 to 106. Uh, I do need a kicker. That's what it was. So once I get a kicker in, our projections should be almost even, which will be fun. Uh, Malik's going to have Trevor Lawrence on Monday night, which is always scary because I would hate to lose on Monday night. That's always a pet peeve of mine, but it, it happens quite often. And I'm going to have to figure out my injury situation whether I trust the Rams wide receivers or not, I, I have a lot of decisions going forward. Plus, like I said, Jonathan Taylor might be out this week. Uh, so I might be all over the place. I'm not sure where I'm going to go. Looks like Tracy's got her lineup set. Her buys are on the bench. She's favored by eight points. Uh, has Jordan made the adjustments? He's no, he's got digs on a buy. Um, oh, yeah. The hard part for him, though, now is that uh, Chris Olave is questionable and he might not play against the Lions, who that would be a great matchup for him if he uh, cleared. I think he's in concussion protocol. So if he cleared, that would be a good replacement. And then Ken Walker, I think his status is still up in the air because they're Thursday night. He probably isn't going to play. So if he puts in Ramondre Stevenson, he should be fine. Oh, he also has Calvin Ridley. I keep forgetting about that. Uh, so he has some good options um, for his yeah. replacements. So that could be another really close matchup. And a that's lot a lot of the line in that, that game. I was going to say that's a big one. That's that's huge. If if Jordan loses, I think you guys are locked in almost. I think the only person I can't remember. Jordan's only close in points to maybe you. So if you win, I think everybody's almost locked in. So Jordan basically has to win out at this point. And then just the uh, playoffs right around the corner. My players are playing really well right now. So yeah, that's all we need. We need to get into the playoffs, <laughs> fresh start. Right. And if, if you got fresh guys uh, in your starting lineup, uh, anything can happen. Yeah. And I just noticed the battle for first place, Marie and Sammy Marie needs a kicker and a defense. And she's got that situation where she has Justin Tucker, who you'd rather not drop, even though he did miss a kick last week, which was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but she's going to need to make some uh, adjustments for that. But um, she shouldn't have any other lineup decisions really to make, unless she wanted to bench one of the Seattle wide receivers, I guess. Um, right. And then finally, Ian and Becky. I don't know if they have their lineup set just yet. But it looks like they have them set. And right now, Ian is favored 115 to 103. But I would really watch that Miami game because they're playing Washington, and Washington's defense is terrible. Becky has uh, only one defense, Baltimore, and they're on a bye. So she's going to oh, okay. have to hit the waiver wire. So yep. it be a mad scramble for defenses this week. Yeah, it definitely could be. Um, and that's that's where I usually like to to stack a couple defenses so you have somebody go to, uh, to go for the playoffs as well. So we'll see what everybody does. Um, and it's it's a crazy week. I think this is probably, I would say, the biggest week of our season because of how close the standings are. Yeah. And, yeah, so you lead Jordan by 50 points. So as long as you keep, like, making an average score and you don't score in like the seventies, you'll probably be all right. all right. At least in a tiebreaker situation. If, if it came down to that, because I, I could definitely see that happening coming down to a tiebreaker, which would be crazy. But any of you guys, six, seven or eight, I can't lose this week. Can't, <laughs> can't lose this week or you're going to be on pins and needles come week 14. I, I, the win that I got against you this past weekend was so desperately needed. I, I really thought if, if I lost this past weekend, I wasn't going to make the playoffs. So it gives me some hope. Yeah, it would have been 
pretty insane, actually. Um, and yeah, like we keep saying, if you just make it in the playoffs, you never know what can happen. An injury can occur, and somebody that's in the eighth seed can win the entire thing. So it's just another uh, wait and see kind of event. But uh, make any waiver claims that you need to, make any bye week adjustments this week, because like I said, this is probably the most important week. Uh, good luck to everybody in week 13. Joe, thanks for zooming in while you're on vacation. And uh, we'll see you guys after week 13. All right, good luck. <laughs>